Hey, my name is Lizzie Smiley, and I absolutely love helping people connect with their calling and all the tools they need to kick roadblocks and excuses right out the door so they can cultivate the life they dream about. If you want to launch, grow, pivot, or scale your Etsy shop, or you've always wanted to develop the mindset and skills to run your own business, then I'm your girl. I've had that entrepreneurial spirit going strong since my very first lemonade stand, and now I'm a work-at-home mama with multiple online companies and a full-time Etsy shop, all while being present with my kids for the everyday chaos and most important milestones. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things business, mindset, Etsy, creativity, dazzling our customers, and so much more. There's plenty of room at this table for you, so scooch on in and let's go. I'm holding nothing back. Welcome to How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, How to Sell Your Stuff fam. I'm so glad to be back in front of the mic hanging out with you this week. And we have an extra special episode today. Jenny from the shop is back to do a mindset chat. The last time we did this, which was the first time we ever did it, you guys ate it up and loved it. And many of you were like changed, inspired and um, made major strides as a result. And so we're like, well, we have to do this again. But if you listen to all my other episodes and you're not familiar with this, it's a very different, it's like very different style. It's not as fast paced. It's more conversational stream of consciousness. We're sharing our thoughts. And I personally love it because I'm a geek for mindset stuff. And so is Jenny. And this is our geek out. And so we just geek out in front of you with you. And it's the best. So come scooch up to the fireside and listen and I can't wait to hear what you think and get all of your, your feedback from it. If you are in the print-on-demand space and you don't know Jenny from the shop, oh my gosh, her success story, she was a full-time teacher, replaced her, her salary in a year with print-on-demand, selling t-shirts and such on Etsy. And then she and her family up and moved to Greece. <laughs> and she lives in Greece now. She comes back for a few weeks a year to visit with family but it's just totally amazing. So I'm going to link, um, she's been on the podcast many times. I will link her first main episode where she came on, told her whole story, and then also just gave the most incredible print on demand tips ever. So if you're a beginner or you're struggling, she literally tells you exactly how it works and it's incredible. So I'll link that episode, but you'd be able to find others from her as well. I will also link the first mindset discussion we did that so many of you loved in case you like this or want to start there or whatever. But she's a very, very dear friend of mine. Jenny is like a real life Disney princess. She is as sweet and lovely and high integrity and trustworthy as she comes across. And um, she's just one of my, my bestie, bestie business friends. Let me tell you a little about her uh, or our little summary today. Jenny from the shop, which is her handle, is back with all of her print on demand goodness. But today we're talking about her journey of developing the mindset of a six figure seller. Tune in to hear why it matters where to focus your own personal growth journey, and how to endure the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. We are so excited to share this with you. Please help me welcome Jenny to the podcast. Jenny, yay, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for having me. As always, I'm so excited to be here. We are pumped to do another mindset conversation for you guys because the last time we did one, I will link the last episode. The I have never gotten so many DMs and emails about, did, did I tell you that, Jenny, that people were super pumped up about that one? Yes. And a lot of them found me through that podcast. So that was awesome. Thank you. I have a lot of lovely new followers from that. So I appreciate all of you. I hope I hope they're listening right now to this one because it's going to be really good. I didn't know that. That's so fun because I knew, I, you, I mean, you guys, first of all, we're not going to go into um, Jenny's like print on demand story today because she's done that like three other times on the podcast. And I will link, especially that first episode where you told your whole story and you gave so many, you literally told someone how to do print on demand. It was the most powerful yeah. podcast. Yeah. So go back and listen to those. Um, but we did one other, um, one other mindset episode. I think I just said that. Yeah. And that's the one. That, so I didn't, so I knew I had sent people over from the print on demand ones, but I'm so excited to yes. hear the mindset one did too. Yes. Yes. I got messages from both podcasts, but recently the mindful, the mindfulness one, because <laughs> that was the most recent one that we did. So well, we're over here, you guys, like two little girls having a slumber party, which is how it always yeah. is when we record together. <laughs> so we're so excited you're here for popcorn and a whole bunch of <laughs> junk food. And no, actually, it's going to be a good, a, a whole bunch of brain food, not to be the biggest yeah. dwarf on the planet, but yeah. And you're going to have to bear with us. Like those of you who do not have ADHD, like try, <laughs> but we have a list. We sat down, we, we tried, we, we really planned this. We have like a list of topics, but they're so, it's yeah. just going to be a conversation. 
I'm not going to do a structured interview, guys. So it'll be fun. But we have to stay, you have to promise you'll stay open minded. I know Jenny wants to talk about that. Yeah, for sure. So um, I just want to say if you sit here and listen to this entire podcast, you're going to leave feeling so good and so energized and amped and excited about life. And hopefully you can apply what we talk about in here to your businesses and just feel like, I don't know, like a breath of fresh air with everything that we're about to talk about. The topics that we have, like Lizzie said, like, we don't have a script or anything like that, you know, like not that there is a script with any of the other ones that we do, but we just have like bullet point outlines of just some like fire topics that are just going to help like ignite you by the end of this. So yeah, I hope that you can be open-minded because some things for some of you, you may not never heard of, and it might seem like an uncomfortable practice for some of the things that we're going to teach you. I know this because some of the things we're going to teach you, I felt very uncomfortable when I started doing them. But then the my reality now is like a beautiful outcome from some of the practices that we're going to teach you in this podcast. Yeah. And so it might come across as a little bit uh, woo woo. And some of it is but the yeah. reality is, is that while our brains are highly scientific, they're also highly suggestible. And that's where like, the woo meets the work. Huh, I've always wanted to say that. Yeah, um, I like that. It's good, right? I think that's a Jenna Kutcher. <laughs> it's like so typical. Um, but it's it, this is so important. And this has been, for me, my favorite part of my entrepreneurial journey. I obviously enjoy the rewards of making the money. But for me, I... Oh, and I wasn't even planning to say this. I grew up a very insecure, bullied, not confident, like just terrified of everything. I'm still socially awkward, so I can't say that's changed. But that was the kind of person that I was. And it was the thing I hated the most was, you know, I always just like, you know, and now I look back, I always just wanted to be one of the, one of the popular kids. But really what I just wanted was to not, was to like love myself, was to be comfortable in my own skin. That's what I think a lot of us crave. And so Mm -hmm. as I grew older, this journey of becoming, you know, this journey of mindset and developing my mindset so much of the way we present to the world is the way that we see ourselves. And so um, I'm really I'm really excited for you if this is new to you because it can be the most rewarding part of the journey. And here's the bottom line. It will make you more money if you do this work. Yes, absolutely. That was beautiful, by the way. Thank you for being vulnerable <laughs> and sharing that. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. Um, I have to stop saying um. No, you don't. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you though. And I always say 90% of my success is from my mindset because there are so many times that like I wanted to give up and my mind, my mindset is what kept me going. I think that like, um, and this is actually maybe a weird place to start, but if you start studying the science behind this, if you go down a bit of a quantum physics rabbit hole, which is very, very interesting. You will learn it. that when it is right. When the scientists study our world, the expression of our world and the expression of our bodies, everything is literally energy. Everything from yeah. our bodies, our organs, you know, my water bottle, um, even liquid, everything is energy. And mm-hmm. the good news about that is it means that everything is changeable. Everything is malleable. We have much more control than we think or we were led to believe. And it it, it feels strange if you're just functioning in the, you know, in our normal three-dimensional reality, because it feels like this is not changeable, but actually it is with heat. It is with cold. You know, you could really start to stretch your brain there, but I say that to say, say all that to say that money is energy and the key to to just some of this, because I think belief in yourself is a big one too, but the key with money is to adjust your inner vibration to one that doesn't repel money, but attracts money. Um, Mm -hmm. I know you had some things you wanted to say on that around that, Jenny. Yeah, for sure. Um, So the word, so think of the word currency, right? We use the word currency for money. Currency, you know, we can get the word current from currency. So think of like a current in the river, right? And a current, we need current for energy. Does that make sense, right? Am I making sense? Yes, I hadn't Um, thought of that. (laughs) <laughs> so this is really deep. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not pulling this out of my. You know what? This is from. Um, I've learned this analogy from Kathy Heller podcast. My, I just learned so much from her. So um, 
basically, and then I'm going to take it a step further. So let's say we're like, you're in, you're swimming in a river. Are you going to swim against the current? That would be really hard, right? Like, so let's pretend like the current is like, like, well, uh, I'm trying to explain this as best as I can, but hopefully that made sense. Are you going to swim against the current? No, you're going to like flow with it, right? So why be like, um, this is so deep. Like, like <laughs> I'm trying to explain it the best I can. You have to, I hope you have to align your deep. energy to move with the currency of money. And if yes, all of your like, mindset is like money is evil or I yes. never have any, take it, go. I know you got it now. <laughs> or like I have to work so hard for money. I have to work X amount of hours to make X amount of money. I used to be like that. I used to have to trade all of my time to get money. And it still wasn't enough money for my time. Um, But then, you know, now where I'm at is I make a lot of money with like minuscule amounts of time. It's it. I never thought that this was possible, probably until I started listening to podcasts like kept Kathy Heller's. It shifted my mindset to see that like, you really don't have to trade your time for money. You don't have to go against the current and be working so hard to try to get money. Like you can just easily flow and make money like way easier. Like money um, is abundant. It's like the air we breathe and like the water that we drink. It's, it's energy. And it, more and it seems very hard. I'm not, I don't want this to like, it seems really hard to like wrap your head around that if you're not in a space yet where money is flowing to you and you're making yes. money easily and effortlessly. This was not the case for me until like a couple years ago. And now I just know it's forever going to be an easy and effortless thing for me. Before I felt like I had to work really hard for it and go against the current, if that makes sense. <laughs> So now pay attention if you're feeling uncomfortable or you're like, I don't know if I like where this is going or I don't understand. That's a really good indication that you've got, you've got the, you have the opportunity to shift your energy and your mindset around money. And the trick is, and we're going to, we'll talk about this more later, but the trick is you have to change how you think before you change how you're experiencing it. So nothing in your reality could change for a while. You might still be working that hard job trading your hours for not enough dollars. You may still be experiencing that there's not quite enough. And in the meantime, you still have to start changing your thoughts about how money comes to you. Jenny, this is perfect. Tell the story about the kids on the playground. Okay. So basically, and and I want to say I am sitting here like, explaining this to all of you. And I want you to know that I used to be in your shoes and listen to people like me talking about it. And in my head, I'd be like, man, I want that so badly. Um, And part of my brain would be like, there's no way that's going to happen to me. Like she just got lucky. And, but then there's part of my brain, like, well, if her, like, why not me? Like we all can achieve really great things. There's room for everyone at the table for abundance and energy and this money, right? So I just want to say that, like, I don't want you to think like, Lizzie and I are just like lucky. It's not like that. Like you can have this life too. But like Lizzie said, there's a transition period, but this is like the start of it for you to be open-minded to the possibilities of it. So now you can start rewiring your brain to get to where we are. And it starts here if you haven't already been like practicing it. Um, And the thing, the analogy that Lizzie wanted to talk about the kids at the playground. So you want to try to get into a mindset where you're like, I don't chase, I attract. So you don't want to give out desperate energy. Like I said earlier, how you don't want to go against the current and you don't, you don't want to be like, I have to work all these hours to make all this money. And you, you know, you might have this vision of this life that you want and you might be like, I'm never going to get there. And like just desperate energy. It's like a kid. It's like two kids at a playground. Right. And 
one of the, the kid that has a desperate energy is chasing the other kid because he wants to play with the other kid. And he's like aggressively chasing after him. Well, what's that other kid going to do? They're going to run away. So they're chasing and the kid is running away. That's like you chasing after your dreams, like aggressively. It's just going to like run away from you. <laughs> it's not going to work until you sit and you relax. You do the work, but you relax <laughs> And you attract. You just need to know that if you know you're setting yourself up right and you're doing all the things that you need to do, but just breathe and don't chase and you will attract. And again, I know this all sounds easier said than done, but with more of the things that we talk about throughout this podcast, it's going to help you attract rather than chase. I hope that all of this makes sense because if this is the first time you're hearing these types of analogies and things, you you might be like, you might have to listen to this again, <laughs> this whole podcast again <laughs> to like fully grasp it because it's like really deep and it's hard to kind of explain these things. I'm trying my best to explain it the best way possible, but these like, you know, it's it's not tangible. So it's kind of hard to like fully explain, but but there are really practical ways to do this. So, so, so far what we've said is you need to align your energy with a really positive place. I and mean, it's not just toxic positivity or whatever. It's, it's shifting your beliefs about things so that you can attract it. Just think about when someone comes into a room and they have really desperate energy and what that does to the environment, or if they have really angry energy, or if they have really um, bouncy, you know, high, high energy or if they have really gentle energy, everyone can feel that. Um, and think about it. Like you think there's there's no energy putting out, but it's literally just their body, their body, their face, maybe mm -hmm. what they say. So everything can be, can can be shifted, right? And so desperate energy, she gave the analogy of the playground, but even like think about dating or if you are a animal person, think about how you have to approach an animal. I'm hoping some of these... Mm -hmm. um, these analogies will help some things click for you. But the key is, is that you have to figure out before you're experiencing. So like usually we think, oh, I'll be happy when it's, e it's easy to have really positive energy when things you're experiencing are great. But when they're, when they're terrible, when you're struggling, it's really hard. And that's the work. So when we talk about putting in the work on this, it's shifting your energy and your attitude when things are not, when you're not experiencing in your circumstances, what you're believing. So we're going to talk a little bit about some things that help. Basically, the bottom line of this is you just have to figure out how to bring your mood, your attitude, and your energy up when you don't feel like it. This is So for those of you who are practical, this is just simple discipline. You're going to love it. So Jenny, do you have some ways that you go about doing that, like bringing your vibration up, bringing your energy and your, your attitude and mindset up when you're not experiencing it or even in a setback? Yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of people skip over this. Don't skip over this. Try your best to wake up every single day. It's the simplest thing, but people will skip it. Before your feet touch the floor, okay? You're about to get up out of bed. Before your, your feet touch the floor, think of three things that you're grateful for. And don't tell me you don't have three things to be grateful for because are you waking? You're, you're awake, so you're alive. That's one thing to be grateful for. Can you see what's around you in the room? That's another thing to be grateful for, your eyesight, right? Um, like, and these things sound so silly, but if that's what you need to start with, like start with that, like three things that you're grateful for. Hope I, I pray that you all have much more to be grateful for, like your families or a roof over your head or a full fridge, three things before your feet touch the ground. That's gonna set you up from the jump, right? As simple as it is, it's going to set you up from the jump. Now, if something happens, let's say you're on your way to work and you spill your co your coffee all over your outfit, <laughs> that would make me really upset, like instantly, right? And I'm sure it'll make anybody like upset, you know. And you could let that ruin your entire day. Do not let an incident ruin your entire day. You can feel angry in the moment. I would be really angry. That's annoying. I got to go home and change and be late to work and blah, blah, blah. Everything that comes with it. My new pants are ruined. That could like, you know, 
easily turn somebody into a downward spiral and the rest of their day is ruined and they're in that negative energy. When an incident occurs, let's say somebody cuts you off, you're driving to work, somebody cuts you off and you might want to give them the finger and yell at them and then cut them off. And then what's that going to do? Then that's going to make him, it's like a ripple effect, right? Let's do this example. Somebody cuts you off. I want you to think, hmm, that person's just having a bad day, like not taking it personal and just go about your day, right? If you're feeling yourself in that negative space, again, think of three things that you're grateful for. You're going to switch it. You're going to think of things that you're grateful for when you're having negative incidents, incidences, incidents, incidents. <laughs> when you're having negative incidents occur, <laughs> I want you to think of three things that you're grateful for. And it's going to like shift your attitude. Um, it, I'm telling you it works. And the first like couple days, it might, you might forget to do it. Like it, it's going to be like a practice, but now to me, it's like second nature to like flip something into a positive to get out of that negative energy. Was there anything else? Lizzie. I just think yeah. that the, the key is you can let something negative happen become this domino effect to negativity and more bad things happening. Think have you ever had a day where you you like keep dropping stuff? And every time you drop something, yeah. you're like, darn, I keep dropping stuff, and then you keep dropping more <laughs> stuff. So like I think the key obviously that's a funny example, but it could be really negative, like the like the one in the car where every the whole day is just gone right after the morning because mm-hmm. You allow yourself to stay there, whereas um, something something negative happens, and you instantly work, like she said, using a gratitude practice to shift your energy. The goal mm-hmm. of all of this is when you're, for whatever reason, if something happened, if nothing happened, if you're just in a negative headspace, shifting yourself out of it. Some people use music to do that, and it works really well. Like a positive song will shift them. Um, some people will use um, affirmations and gratitude, like Jenny's talking about. Um, I am a, so I, for me, I'm bringing a different facet into this because I'm usually trying, I'm not a negative thinker, but I, I can be anxious. I can, I can really struggle with anxiety, especially around health. Like I, for some reason I hit 40 and just got terrified of everything. Um, (laughs) and so I really incorporated a lot of meditation because the more, the longer period of time you can shift your energy out of anxiety, the more you can move mm-hmm. towards winning and not living in anxiety at all. And when it comes shifting it really fast, because all it is, is you're in a fight or flight state in your physiology. And as soon as you shift yourself out of that, you shift your brain, you can live very free. So I personally, I'll do two meditations a day. One, um, for me, it works to do one during nap time. It would be ideal if I could do it when I first woke up, but I'm woken up by a toddler. So that doesn't work. So I do one during nap time because I know it won't be interrupted. And I do one before I go to bed. It'll either be, it'll be somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes. The longer, the better. That's more for like long term. I'm trying to, I'm trying to completely change the way my brain is wired out of anxiety. But Mm -hmm. if that's, if that's too much for you, there's this app that I love. It's called Superhuman. And I'll put a link down below because I believe you can get the first two weeks free. This thing's been huge for me. And all it is, is it's these little, anywhere from like three to 20 minutes or, or longer if you want, but most of them are short. They're little, um, what does she call them? She says not meditation, but I'm trying to remember remember what the, what the phrase is. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but the point is, is there's, they're little bites. So what happens is like, if I'm putting my makeup on to get on this, like before I got on this podcast, I was listening to one of these short little, it's like a short meditation that you do usually with your eyes open and it just brings your energy up. Uh, and, um, so listening to things can help. Um, sometimes like mm-hmm. if I can't listen to something, I will read, I have certain books or like devotional type things that I can read that will shift my energy positive. There are so many different tools. For some people, it's um, it's calling a friend. There's a certain person they know, and they, that's where you got to pay attention to how people affect your energy. Like, yeah, for sure. I better believe I I let Jenny know. We'll jump. I'll jump on Marco Polo. We're all under a text, and I'll say, "Hey, I'm like, I need some encouragement, or um, mm-hmm. you know, I need some prayer, or whatever it is." Yeah, so I think the, for sure. Is that a pretty decent list? I'm, I feel like I'm missing one or two of the practical. Yes, ones. and like the the thing about like listening to podcasts or like the mindfulness app that you're talking about, it's 
when you're in a, like a negative headspace and you're listening, listening to something positive, you're not able to like really think negative thoughts while you're listening to something positive, you know? So it's like substituting like that time period where you're feeling really negative and could be just sitting there in silence with all these negative thoughts. Instead, you're sitting there listening to positive thoughts and starting to like shift your frequency. If you guys haven't jumped onto the Everbee bandwagon yet, this is your sign to check it out ASAP. If you haven't heard of it before, Everbee is a free tool that can help you find trends, products, and niches that are hot sellers on Etsy right now. I personally use it in tandem with Sales Samurai because they do totally different things. And I literally don't think I could compete in the current Etsy marketplace today without it, or help you guys as effectively. Um, Everbee gives me so much information that I can't glean just from studying Etsy. All you need is a laptop or desktop. You can't do it on your phone, so you do need a laptop or whatever. A Google Chrome browser, a quick install of the Everbee extension, and for my tech challenge friends, I promise you it's super simple, and then you will gain access to a whole new world of data about your niche and competitors. So this is a tool I use every single day Um, for my own Etsy shop research, for coaching calls that I do with you guys all the time, for shop reviews I do for you guys all the time. And just as I work on growing my personal mastery of Etsy, these tools have, have become so instrumental in getting the results that I do. And I, I mean, I can still use my old school tactics. I still use them, but I... I don't use them alone anymore because it's just, it's a whole different ball game. So these guys have just been a game changer for me. I use Everbee to learn everything about bestsellers and high performing listings. It shows me, okay, I'm going to give you a rundown. It shows me how many sales a shop makes from each listing. I can see how many they've sold of it, how much money that listing has made them or is earning them every month, how old the listing is, like how, how early did they get on on that, on that trend, what their tags are and how competitive those tags are. It gives me an at-a-glance view of all the shop data, um, which sometimes I can't otherwise find, and like the competitor listing data that I need to help my students and myself find ways to penetrate the market. So like I said before, Etsy has a totally free version, like not just a free trial. There is a free version so everyone can get access to it. Download Down in the show notes, I have a link to their site for you so you can um, check it out. And I also included a quick YouTube tutorial to show you exactly how I use it because sometimes like the barrier to entry is trying to figure out new technology. So I got you. Just go watch. It's a quick video. It'll show you how to navigate it. So if you don't have it yet, get Everbee. Jump on that today. I'm so excited for you to get this edge on the market you're going to love it. It's a game changer. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's like, where do we even go from here? I I guess I will say, since we've talked, we touched on this already, the two highest places, like, or I guess there's three I can think of off the top of my head. The highest places you can be thought wise is in a state of gratitude, in a state of love, and in a state of curiosity. Those three Mm -hmm. are the ones to aim at, like the vast majority of the time that you want to shift yourself to. You're nodding. Do you agree with me? I I agree with you with that. And I just want to say that everyone who's listening to this right now and anyone who is like listening to your podcast, Lizzie, like that you must be a creative person to be here because you, you know, you're interested in Etsy, you're interested in starting a business, like you are a creative person. So you're already off to a really good start because having creativity and, um, a passion for something and like goals to work towards is that's higher up in that frequency scale. You know, like, I don't know where it is on the frequency scale, but to have a purpose or ambition or excitement around a project or using your creativity, like you're all already in the right space. Like if you're not feeling what Lizzie and I are talking about on this podcast, like you're right there. You're very close to it. Yeah. So like, yeah, a little lower than um, curiosity, love, and gratitude would be things like hope and faith and vision yes. and passion. These, those, are, yeah. those are getting there too. Those are all positive places to be. And we were there. We were in that stage, you know, like we all have to go through these stages to get to the top. And I wanted to say too, Lizzie and I talked about this before we came on here was I like, I don't want you to think that Lizzie and I like are these masters in like mindfulness. We still need to practice everything we're talking about today. We need to practice every day still like 
I, like I don't wake up and just be in a positive mood all day long every day. Like I have to still remind myself to do these gratitude exercises and my affirmations and and working and just like working towards staying in that like higher frequency. It, 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 you know, as long as we've been working on it, we still need to work towards it. I want to see, there's this girl I follow. I hope this isn't going to play music. Is it? No. Okay. So I read this thing yesterday. It was a post that I saw online and um, it's a quote from Alan Sultanik, who's a new person I'm following, but he's someone who he's like um, a very high wealth generator. So a little more advanced, but he's a thought leader and he Let me see, where is the, so the post said the how, how, what thinking model to millions. If you can make a thousand dollars a month online, then you can make a hundred thousand dollars a month. And if you can make a hundred thousand dollars a month online, then you can make a million dollars a month. The one who, the ones who get stuck are the ones who think that it's a different activity to make $1,000 versus a hundred thousand dollars versus a million dollars. When in reality, it's the same activity and the only difference is frequency. Repeating that same activity over and over again. Oh yeah, repeating. So I'll stop there. Um, There's more I could say, but the point is, is like Jenny and I have not arrived. I'm not making a hundred thousand a month yet. (laughs) Although wait, just wait, I will be. We're all graduating to different levels of, uh, of mindset. And I, but what I will tell you is that the more that you do it, the easier it gets. Yeah. Like your next, my next goal of a hundred thousand dollars a month still feels a little off, out there for me. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but we know, we know that it's a possibility and achievable because of what we've seen with our growth coming from making like not that much a month, you know? I mean, I don't flinch at 1000 a month or no. 5,000 a month or 10,000 a month at all anymore. No. Um, and I mean, beyond that, so, so the point is, and, and the same I'll tell you if you're uh, if you're dealing with anxiety like like I have dealt with, you would not believe how much easier it gets. The beginning is very difficult because you're re- you're literally retraining your brain. You are literally carving new neural pathways through your brain. And if you think about that, I think I gave this analogy last time. It's like walking through snow. If you've got three feet of snow, the first time you walk through it, you are trudging. It is hard work, and that path that you're taking, you know, from your un- unshoveled front door, you know, uh, front step down to your mailbox is rough. But by Mm -hmm. the 10th time that you've trudged back and forth, you've padded down the path. And the more that you train your brain to think in in a positive mindset versus maybe some of the harder ones that you've been thinking for a really long time, you're going to make it easier and easier for your brain to follow the more positive path. You know what? Maybe Mm -hmm. we shift now, Jenny, and we talk a bit about some of the common blocks. This is another really practical piece. You know, a lot of the common blocks that I had and that my students have had, you know, range from like, you know, am I good enough to do this? Do I have the skill set to do this? Uh, She just got lucky. There's no way I'll be able to be as successful as her. Uh, The business is saturated this is hard. Am I a lot of imposter syndrome, right? A lot of those fall under, if you've heard before, imposter syndrome, keep going. But yeah, those are all really good. Am I wasting my time? That's a hard one. I get a lot. I'm surprised. I I didn't realize how many people, when I did, I did a poll recently, Jenny, on my Instagram. And a lot of people said the biggest block for them, the biggest fear was, or like issue was that they didn't think they had the time. They didn't think they have the time to do it or yeah, they were they scared. They like just didn't have enough time, like fear. Or, it yeah. wasn't fear. It was like a time thing was the mindset issue. And you yeah. might be surprised to hear that's a mindset issue. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know? Because I grew my business. <laughs> like you could say I didn't have time. I was very busy, but I, you can find time if you really want something badly. You can find the time. Like I built my business in the pockets of my time. Cause that's all that I had, but, and like, you know, you substitute watching Netflix at night, like you got to give, you got to make some sacrifices. You got to maybe not watch Netflix a couple nights a week and work on your business or work on your mindset. You know, you need to substitute these things and find I do think, time. I think with mindset work, a lot of that 
like here, the goal is to be thinking that way all the time. So that's why I love like that superhuman app is because I can do that around the kids. I'm playing with the kids, Mm -hmm. like having one of these, like, you know, affirmation um, things play or one of these mindset things play the podcast. I mean, Kathy Mm -hmm. Heller, I feel like you could play that while you're cooking dinner, baiting the kids or whatever. Yeah. In the shower, sometimes I play. <laughs> Kathy Heller. Always, yes. Um, but like when I had a job to and from work is when I would listen to mostly Kathy Heller, but like um, just anything positive to and from work every day. Like Nas, my husband still makes fun of me like because he would know when I was coming home. I don't know why I would have it up so high, but he would hear me like turning the corner because he would hear the podcast like, burr, 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 like through the windows because I, <laughs> I would listen to it every single day. And then now I kind of miss my commutes to work because I don't listen to it every single day, but a couple of times a week I'll like listen to it when I'm making dinner or in the shower or something. Does she do a daily podcast? I don't know. I think it's a. I think it's weekly. Maybe. Okay, I'm just. Like, I think what a boss. Like a I can't weekly. imagine. Yeah. No. I think it's like two a week. So here's the thing yeah. too about time, and this is going to segue really nicely into like your 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 expectations for yourself with this, which is a big mindset issue, a common one. I think a lot of us think, oh my gosh, this is just going to take hours and hours every day, whereas it could take. I mean, you could fit it in 20 20 to 60 minutes every day. And now granted, that's not going to make you a millionaire by the end of the year. But what if you did give it 20 to 60 minutes every day for the next couple of years? And then by the end of that, you had 10,000 a month coming in or 5,000 a month coming in or 50,000 a month coming in. I don't know. It depends on, on how you go after it. I think everyone has some time. And I mean, trust me, I am running more than one business. I am homeschooling my daughter. I'm chasing after a toddler. I am like running this household. I just moved and I travel. I move back and forth twice a year. I understand what it is to be insanely busy. And and I'll tell you what, I'll go through grind seasons. I, I know I told you guys like earlier in the year, I was working from like, you know, maybe nine or 10 when the kids went to bed till two or three in the morning. And then that started to affect my health. And so I adjusted. And now, you know what? I can't run as hard. And so I'm like, but I'm not going to give up on what I'm building for future me. And so Mm -hmm. I work until 11, till 10 or 11. And I'll, I'll just start, I start a little earlier. Husband takes over at five. I take a little break for dinner and I work from five to 10. I work during lunch and I work a bit on the weekends and that's when I work and that's just it. And I know that I'm not going to do two podcasts a week or five YouTube videos a week and, you know, a hundred new Etsy listings a week. I just know. And so I adjust my expectations. Okay. We're going to go on to that. The other common blocks that we haven't touched on is fear of failure, fear of success. We talked about imposter syndrome. The opinions of others is a really big one. I think for Etsy that you can just eliminate that altogether. Don't tell anyone. You don't have to tell anybody. I didn't tell anyone. You don't have to tell anybody. Tell tell that story. That's so good. Longest time. I didn't tell anyone. Like, I will tell you the the biggest things that I have found success with, I never told anyone until I like achieved the desired outcome. Aside from like my husband and then like my parents, I tell those three people everything. (laughs) But like, I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want to be I didn't feel like being judged and, you know, the noise, the voices of others can be a really loud noise in your head. You don't want that. So to just eliminate the voices, the noise of others is to just not even tell them what you're doing. Even if you're like really excited one day and you're having a great day and you just like call your friend and you feel like, t- don't do it. DM us. <laughs> I know we have those days where we like feel like sharing more. Just wait, just wait until you have things on a roll, on a steady roll. <laughs> and if you don't have a supportive husband and or parents like Jenny, that's okay too. You don't have to tell yeah. anyone. I can't tell you no. how many people I coach and they're not telling yeah. anyone. And that's the beautiful thing. You do not have to run social media, especially in the beginning, getting started on Etsy. You do not have to have friends and family make those first few purchases to give you reviews because the algorithm will do that for you. Position the product yeah. well, have good SEO. If you yeah. have to try a little ad spend behind it, you'll get the sales and the reviews if your things are positioned well and you'll be fine. So like yeah. that one doesn't have to be a thing. I understand why that one is a thing. And I get that. I'm like, so <laughs> I was so bullied in school that I think of like, I never went back to like a high school reunion or anything, but I think back to like, if those people find this podcast, 
cringe. <laughs> I can't even. I'm, I go back. I vacillate. Part of me is just like, yeah, you should find it. You know, like look, look, look at where the geek is now. Look, I'm really not that sassy, but I'm kind of just like, okay. Did you see me? No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was someone else I have a doppelganger uh, with the same name. Uh, so anyway, um, and then the other one was uh, uh, the other common block is guilt and shame. And I'd love yes. to talk about this for a second because um, I was talking to Jenny about this before we started. And she's like, gosh, I still I still sometimes feel that a little bit like uh, I'm taking maybe I'm taking an hour away from my kids or whatever. But here's what I will tell you. I've now raised I have two stepdaughters who are. 21 and 22, I had to think because they they old they age too fast. And then I have a nine-year-old yeah. daughter and I have a 23-month-old son. He's too young still, but all three of those girls have been so positively impacted by me taking a little of my time where I am away from them for a few minutes working on my business. Why? Yeah. Every single one of them has entrepreneurial little factor features to them now or have mindset things that they wouldn't have without it. We would play mindset stuff in the car when we were all driving together and the girls would just be buzzing with ideas and asking questions and trying to understand. You start them young if you can, because if you start with a teenager, I mean, still make them listen to it or they'll have the earbuds. But my, my nine-year-old daughter, she's like constantly on Canva designing things. And right now she, she's not selling anything or doing anything great. She sold a few stickers on Redbubble. That's but awesome. guess what? If I'd started designing on Canva when I was nine, I can't even imagine what I could do now. <laughs> I can't even yeah. imagine. So do, you don't need to take four hours away from them, but one hour where they can see you're prioritizing yourself, you're building towards your future, and it can be a very positive yeah. impact. Do you sure, want to throw anything for sure. and that's, fun, that, that's, that's one for you. My daughter is only six, and um, same thing. She designs as well. So it's fun because we get to like share this experience. She'll be like, Mom, do you think anybody's going to buy this? I'm like, totally. We don't <laughs> even list it. We don't list it on, on Etsy yet, but I'm like, yeah, like, they're definitely gonna, they're definitely gonna buy that. <laughs> you're nicer than me. I'm like, I'm like talking to her about demand. I'm like, no, you're not, you're, you're designing what you want, not what the customer wants. I'm so mean. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. I love but it. Good, but it's good. Little, it's good for the kids. It's good for the yes, kids. Yes, it is. You know, you're, you're bettering yourself as a person. And when you better yourself as a person, you better everyone around you. Everyone benefits from you doing good for yourself. Hey there, how to sell your stuff fam. Real quick, I want to make sure you guys know about my most popular free resource that's waiting for you over on my website. Seriously, thousands of people have downloaded this puppy because it's so packed with meaty tips to help you get more sales in your Etsy shop. So first of all, just a little background, or this won't mean much to you at all. But in case you don't know my story, when I first started my Etsy shop in 2016, I had been blogging for a while and had built a decent following on Facebook. We did a nursery reveal for some DIY reclaim wood signs that my husband built and we painted with homemade stencils. <laughs> so cringeworthy now. And a few of my followers were like, oh my gosh, those are so cute. They're so rustic. Where can I buy those? And so as you can imagine, the wheels were just turning in my entrepreneurial little mind. With my baby, I wasn't going to be able to continue the social media consulting work that I've been doing because I was constantly on these team calls and needing to do hours and hours of deep focused work. And it just wasn't going to fly. And I really wanted to be present with my daughter. So that's how I ended up on Etsy. And I decided to try and sell Reclaim Wood signs. It was the height of the farmhouse craze. So just imagine like, thank you to the lovely Joanna Gaines, everything farmhouse, everything painted wood. And I thought with my blog followers, I might just have a bit of a leg up. But I was wrong. <laughs> I was dead wrong. I put in the hours. I got my first round of products fo ready, photographed, meticulously put together my listings, clicked publish, and absolutely nothing happened. And I think I made $60 total in the first few months because of my blog followers. And then it was like absolute crickets. So like you may feel if you're just getting started and not seeing results yet, I was confused and definitely a bit discouraged. I for sure thought that I was onto something and I didn't know at all why it wasn't working. <laughs> but the thing about a true-blooded entrepreneur is that we ultimately see business like a puzzle to solve, right? Like we find ways to make it fun. And we're a little bit stubborn and determined to just figure it out. As I always like to say, thanks to the book and phrase coined by Marie Forleo, everything is for figure outable. And so I dug my heels in and started studying everything I could find about making sales on Etsy. I studied the competition. I poured through best-selling listings, 
all over the internet. I took an Etsy course and I started testing things. And lo and behold, by about six months, I was making more and more and more sales. Like I just keep learning and tweaking and growing and testing until it started to work. And I built my monthly income to $6,000 plus per month. Like there were even months when I would hit 10, 11, or 12K. And it was the best feeling ever. Like if you can just kind of put yourself in that moment where like you figure it out and you start really making the money. So full circle, back to that free resource that started this whole conversation. When I moved into the Etsy coaching space, I sat down and I wrote out everything that I had done to create results, like all the changes and tweaks I made that turned into more and more sales. And from that, I wrote the first rendition of my Etsy course, Listings That Sell. So I had somewhere to house like all of the details. And I created a free PDF outlining four major strategies I used so that I could help someone new or struggling to at least get started without having to invest in a course, right? So that PDF is called the four strategies I used to grow my Etsy shop from 25 to 6,000 plus per month. And it is by far my most popular, most downloaded freebie. You can absolutely check it out. The link is in the show notes for you. And I hope it gets your wheels turning and helps you start to move the needle in your Etsy shop in the direction of your goals. So grab it today. And I cannot wait to hear about your takeaways. As you approach this, like I do think also expectations are really important. Um, I was telling Jenny before, I was like, it's like when you take your kid to the park and they're having a great time and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to give them a, I'm like, I'm like Lorelai 10 minutes until we have to go. And then I even do a five minutes until we have to go. Because if I don't give her a heads up and then all of a sudden she's having a great time, like we're leaving now, you get the meltdown of the century. But if you, if you give me yeah. the, the expectation, like, hey, you've got 10 minutes, enjoy it. You've got five minutes. I have, if any of you ever watch uh, Daniel Tiger, I used to do when they were little, I go, it's almost time to stop. So choose one more thing to do. <laughs> Uh-huh. It's something about singing, also singing things for some reason for kids, I don't know, parenting makes it makes them take it easier. But you need to have expectations for yourself. If you're going into essay and you're like, okay, I'm going to change my entire family's finances in the next 30 days or in the next 90 days or in the first year, I'm not saying that's impossible. We've seen people do it. Okay, that's possible, but it's not probable. That's not the normal story. And if you go in with that, you're going to burn out and your mindset's going to be trash and you're just going to be sad. Whereas if you're, and, and that's why also you don't need to be giving this four hours a day because you need, you, you've got to give yourself a chance to like, if you have the time, fine, but I'm just saying, don't beat yourself up right now to get the work done thinking that's going to make that big of a difference. If you're desperate for cash, you need to go drive for like Uber Eats right now, or you need to do some babysitting, yeah. you know, have some, yeah. someone bring their kids over to play with yours, or you need, this is not fast cash. Yeah. But what would happen if you did put in an hour a day for the next two years, and then you've got the 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 coming in a month. So it's all about the, what expectation are you setting for yourself? Are you are you setting yourself up for an absolute conniption fit because it didn't go your way? Or are you setting yourself mm-hmm. up for a more peaceful <laughs> transition? Did you want to add yeah. anything on that one, Jenny? Yeah, I have two things to say about that. So I feel like it's totally okay to have like the expectation and the goal and the vision that, you know, someday you will get to those thousand dollar months, as long as you continue to work on it every day, like, and consistently, like Lizzie was saying, I think in the meantime, to like, what I did was I kept my teaching position. And I was like, I'm not quitting until I match my teaching salary and like know that it's only going up from here. Like I I made sure that I wasn't just like, wow, this opportunity is great. Jenny's making X amount of money a month. I can do the two. I'm going to quit my job. Like I'm going to start Etsy tomorrow and I'm going to quit my job. Like, and I'm going to make all this money in the next like couple weeks. No, it doesn't work like that. Like It takes a lot of time and effort and consistency and learning. Consistency is like the biggest factor there, which mindset ties into to keep you being consistent because you have to do like parts of it's fun. The designing process is fun to me. I love it. I'm passionate about it. But let's be real, like the listing part is boring and researching SEO is boring. Like there's a lot of boring parts to it. I am so an adrenaline rush when I'm designing, but then the other parts it's boring, right? You have to be comfortable with doing boring things every single day (laughs) to like achieve really to achieve greatness, to achieve greatness. There's got, it's boring and you got to do it every single day. You know, your design days are going to be lit. 
They're <laughs> awesome, right? But you got to do <laughs> you got to do the boring things to achieve greatness. And I think I just kind of got off on a little tangent, but back to um it's okay to still have a full-time job or another job on the side. I think it's almost important to so that you don't have that chasing desperate energy towards making Etsy work. I need to make $5,000 this month, like, or else I'm not going to, you know, be able to pay my bills because I just quit my job yesterday. That sounds really awful that you need to put that stress on you because you quit your job. You have to make X amount of money on Etsy. Like, and you just started, that is extremely stressful and not fun. And you're going to get that desperate energy and chase, 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 and not be able to get into a flow state and find products and niches that are in demand and be in a flow state to do to make good designs for niches that are in demand to then sell these products because you're in a rush trying to get up as many listings as possible i think it's okay i know it's more than okay to still have your job and you have that stability of that income coming in monthly And then on the side, putting in as much time as you can every day. If, like Lizzie said, you have a jam-packed day tomorrow, just go into your shop for five minutes and maybe message some customers back. Maybe just browse Etsy and see what, what best sellers there are. Just, you know, maybe even make a list for yourself where it's like, all right, when I have five minutes to, to uh, work on this, I'm just going to browse Etsy and get a feel for what's selling because that could take like five minutes, you know, but it say you have a 20 minute time slot, like you can make a design in 20 minutes, you know, so kind of gauge in your head what parts of the Etsy process, like how long each part takes so that when you have a free five free five minutes on hand, you can jump right into like researching, like, cause you don't have to sit there and say, Hmm, I have five minutes. What could I do with my time? You know, in your head, Oh, I have five minutes. Let me just like browse that. You can pick up your phone. You're waiting to pick up your kid from school and you're in the pickup line. You just pick up your phone and browse Etsy for five minutes and take some snapshots of some bestsellers that you're seeing to gain inspiration from to then have a list. I'm going off on a tangent to have, to be ready now. Okay. You're gaining inspiration from these bestsellers in your niche, whatever it is that you sell on Etsy. So now for me, it's print on demand. I have all these best sellers in the, let's say like the botanical niche. I have all these examples. Now my brain is primed and ready to then when I have a 20 minute time slot to sit down, I know I'm designing a botanical design because I I, I took the five minutes earlier this morning to research what was in demand. So it's kind of like prepping yourself um, for those open pockets throughout the day. This like came out of nowhere. It wasn't even what I was going to say, but I don't even know where we are. The other thing I wanted to say, (laughs) I hope that helps, but let me get back to, well, basically, okay, basically, let me, let me get back to it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I hope that helps. We love a tangent around Um, here. We're back, circling it back. So it's okay more than okay to have that job stability while on the side working towards what it is you're trying to achieve. When you have, when you match a certain expectation is when you can maybe let go of your job. But like, I don't want you to say, Jenny said I can quit next (laughs) month. Like, don't do that. Okay. Have that stability coming in so that you don't have that chasing, um, energy. And then the other thing I want to say before I forget was I live in Greece for like the people that don't know. I live in, I just moved to Greece two years ago and my view from one of my balconies is a castle. It's gorgeous. And I was actually like working on my Etsy shop the one day and I like look up and I look at it and I got this thought like the castle took over 100 years to build how I don't know how they build these things. They are gorgeous, right? And it's over a thousand years later and I can hike up that castle. I hike up this castle. There are houses on this castle. It is so strong, right? 
it took 100 years to build and it's still standing 1,000 years later, strong. I could like kick it. I could like push it. It's strong, right? So basically, <laughs> I can't believe it. Every time I'm on this, I'm like, how? I, it's crazy. But anyways, you're not, you, you're not going to build your business overnight and you don't want to build your business overnight because it's not going to be long standing if you build it overnight. Good things take time to build. So every day that you are working on your business or your Etsy shop, envision that it is the block, the brick, the rock, whatever it is that they used to build a castle. <laughs> every day is one rock at a time. You're building your castle every day. You're adding on one brick at a time, one block at a time to build your castle. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. No, this is these are really good like wrapping up points. Um I feel like we've got a whole other episode worth of notes we could do. I, know, I think crazy. the last practical thing I want to tell you that if you study um, any of Joe Dispenza's books, I highly recommend. Uh, I would start with breaking the habit of being yourself. But what you'll learn is that uh, in terms of energy and the quantum field, you'll learn that your brain does not know the difference between reality and imagination. Um, right. your brain is, is, is built on belief. Everything that is, that is true in your brain is built on belief. And it's part of how people can go crazy, but it's also how people can become, you know, like Solomon in the Bible or like have a Midas touch, uh, is if they can understand and harness, um, if you're a Christian like me, this is, this is how Jesus operated was understanding that, like, think about how he just manifested things like fish. And like, uh, there was one time when they needed money and he pulled coins out of a fish's mouth. It's very amazing how he, like the phrase on earth as it is in heaven is literally this, like we are literally, and, and the church has lost this, even though it's the Bible's full of it. So I want you to know that y you have to just switch, tw uh, train your belief, tra constantly be training your belief. And, mm -hmm. um, the other mm -hmm. thing I want to say is just every, every decision you make, I'm, I'm starting to train my daughter on this now with homework, <laughs> make life easier for your future self. Every decision that you make today, like uh, my dad always says, uh, don't put off for tomorrow, what you could get done today. But I think the bigger thing is, is, is start build building. Like if today is hard and you wish that you had done something better last year so that you'd be in a better place this year, don't make the same mistake again, start right now and every day make life easier for future you. But Jenny, mm -hmm. I think what we need to wrap up with is your affirmation card story and your quote about most people. <laughs> okay. All right. So the affirmation card that kind of ties into what Lizzie was just saying, how our brains don't know the difference between um, like what's real and what's not real. So this affirmation trick, like I, I don't know if I should even use the word trick. Like <laughs> it just, what I'm about to tell you is going to sound so unreal because it still feels unreal to me, but it worked. So I had a little piece of paper and on this piece of, piece of paper, I wrote down an affirmation. I'm going to tell you it in a second. At the time that I wrote this affirmation, I was still struggling as a teacher. I really badly wanted to be a full-time Etsy seller. I wanted to be financially free from Etsy and make enough money to be able to um, move to Greece with my family. It felt far out of reach at the time. I knew I was like doing the work to try to get there, but it just felt far out of reach, right? So that's where I was when I wrote this. So on my card, you write affirmations in the present moment as if you already have it. And it feels extremely uncomfortable because you, you don't have it. You're not anywhere close to it, right? But you're going to write it as if you already have it. So this is what I did. I said something along the lines of, and I got to find it. I should have found it for this episode. I have it somewhere. Um, but I wrote something along the lines of, um, I was able to quit my teaching position. I am financially free and living in Greece with my family. And I just said something like, I'm so grateful for my life. Money flows to me easily and effortlessly. 
I read this every single day. I, it was a small piece of paper. I folded it up, kept it in my wallet. Read it every single day to finally like memorizing it, right? But in the beginning, it's uncomfortable. You're like, I am financially free and living <laughs> in Greece with my family. <laughs> it's like feels cringy and weird and like uncomfortable, like what? Like weird, okay? But I just read it every single day. Then I memorized it and said it every single day. So at least once a day I would say it. But other times that I would say it was someone cut me off. They made me angry. I'm driving. I want to switch that negative uh, energy that we talked about earlier. You can use gratitude. I'm grateful for blank. Or you can use an affirmation like this because your body doesn't recognize like your what your emotions are like if you're happy or sad. But when you have a feeling and you're reading this affirmation, like it just works. I'm telling you. So happy, sad, mad. Read, read or recite your affirmation. Okay. So let me think. I would say about, about six months later, it's literally that fast. Six months later, maybe a little bit more. I am walking home from a Pilates class. I have a little extra time on my hands. I have my backpack with me and I sit down and I'm like, let me, I, I had a few affirmation cards at the time. So I was like, I haven't like read my affir- affirmations in a while. Like, let me read some of my old ones. So I pull them out. Guys, I was sitting on the beach in Greece. I pull out this affirmation card. Did you just hear me say I'm walking home from a Pilates class? I sit on the beach. I'm like, let me read some of my old affirmations. My jaw dropped. It was, I... And financially free and living in Greece with my family. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly. I'm so grateful. I have a picture of it. I should post it on my Instagram when this when this airs. Um, but I have a picture of it. I held it up in front of the sea and the mountains. I was on the beach in Greece and I was just like, oh my goodness gracious. Like I could not believe it. Like, I remembered I wrote that, but like, it was the most wildest feeling to sit there and read that and be like, wow, this really does work. How? I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Do you have a dispensable tell you how? (laughs) It worked. worked. It's crazy. So write down an affirmation, like get uncomfortable, like think about like exactly what you want, write it in the present tense. Feel the gratitude for it as if you already received it. And that's hard to do in the beginning too. Like it's like almost like you're an actor, like you're trying to get in the feeling of it. It's like weird. So if you have difficulty like feeling it, what I suggest is like listening to a song that like moves you. Like, you know, when you just like hear a certain song, it makes you feel happy or like, like excited. I don't know. There's certain songs that do that to me. I don't know. Read it while you're listening to a song that makes you feel good or like eat a piece of chocolate. You feel good when you eat a piece of chocolate and read it then, you know, but like I said too, you can read it or recite it during negative times too. The body doesn't know, like it can't distinguish the happy emotion from the angry emotion. That's why like flip the negative thing that's going on by like saying your affirmation then as well. But then you have to also take actionable steps. Like I took actionable steps. I worked in my Etsy shop every single day and like I didn't give up. You know, you can't just like write this belief and poof, it happens. It's having a vision, believing in yourself, plus like taking those steps to get there and just like having the faith along the way. And the, letting the affirmation go. practice helps you become the person who can create the outcome. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Um, you become yeah. what you believe. So well, on the so other good. side of it too, on the other that's side good. of it, I wrote, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it the door shall be open, open to you. you. That's I another scripture. That. Let's finish with that quote that you tell yourself where, where most people give up. So uh, this like popped in my brain recently because I've been like, you know, dabbling into new businesses and stuff. I can't, I'm a multi-person, multi-passionate person. So (laughs) I can't stop like trying new things, but I always get like that 
there's beginner thoughts when I try new things and you feel like frustrated. And there's always that moment when it's like, ah, this is a waste of time. I should just give up. But when I feel, when I hear a thought like that, I say like, I, like most people would give up, but I'm not most people. So whenever like you hit a little hurdle or an obstacle, you're going to say like, this is where most people would give up. I'm not most people. And you're going to push through. And this doesn't, this can go for other things too, like not even just business, you know, like if you're trying to like, you know, start a new workout plan or something and you don't feel like getting your 10K steps a day (laughs) because it's raining or drizzling or something like that. Like, it's like, this is where most people would just stay in and sit on the couch and skip the walk. I'm not most people. And you're going to get up your, put your shoes on and walk out that door with your umbrella. (laughs) And it's hard to do, but you've got to talk to yourself like that. Like, You have to kind of pull yourself out of your body and be like, "Mm -mm, this is what you're doing. You're not going to stop here. You're going to keep going. You're not. That attitude attitude can heal marriages. That attitude can turn kids around. That attitude can make you money. That attitude can change your health. Um, That attitude can heal your body. It's amazing. I love that. When you told me that last time, Jenny, when we chatted, I was just like, oh man, we've got to capture that. That's so good. Do you have any, I mean, golly, we've gone in like an hour. (laughs) <laughs> this is a long one, guys, but I hope that stream of consciousness discussion has been like helpful for people. And I feel like this, maybe the slower pace is good too, letting things sink in. But is there anything else that you wanted to add, Jenny, before we say goodbye? I think I word vomited enough for this <laughs> episode. Well, make sure and give us the feedback, guys. And um, Jenny and I could definitely see doing more content like this in the future and I'm sure we'll get more organized around it, although this is fun too. But um, we just want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for sticking with us if you have <laughs> if you have <laughs> stayed for the past hour to hear our, our chats about this. And we hope that you're feeling inspired. We hope that just listening to this has, has shifted something in you and you just feel yourself kind of at a bit of a higher vibration. I, we both wholeheartedly agree that absolutely anybody can make Etsy work. And I am not joking. I know people in their 80s who are doing this. I know people with severe special needs who are doing this. We had a guest on the podcast who's legally blind who is doing this, and she's selling physical products. There there just doesn't need to be a barrier. And if you feel that there are, I invite you to explore mindset um, and maybe some of the tools that we threw out. But thank you so much for spending this time with you. We love you so very much. And until next week, go make something awesome. Oh, wait, Jenny, where can they find you? (laughs) Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's Jenny from the shop, TikTok, Jenny from the shop, YouTube, Jenny from the shop. So the only only one that's different is Instagram. It's Jenny from the shop, but TikTok and YouTube is just Jenny from the shop with two P's. I should have put that with two P's at the end. They'll all be linked. Okay. Now I'm saying goodbye for real. Have a great one guys. Bye. (laughs) And that's a wrap on this episode of how to sell your stuff on Etsy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you're looking for more resources, head on over to howtosellyourstuff.com where you'll find podcast show notes, all the links from today's episode, the blog, courses, coaching, and more. If this episode was helpful to you, awesome. The greatest compliment I can receive from you is a rate, review, and subscribe on this podcast. Not only will it allow us to connect again on a future episode, it lets me know I'm providing you with value and helps other people find this content more easily. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. Have a great day and see you next time.